Riverside Realty and Auction is proud to present Country Lifestyles. Come along as we travel highways, highways, hills and fields of this extraordinary and majestic region. Sit back, relax, and enjoy Country Lifestyles. Hi folks, welcome to United Country Country Lifestyles. We're very excited that you're joining us on the show today. We're in Thompson Valley doing the February show and it's a balmy four degrees. We're out here with my business partner, Alan Neal, and our good friend, Mike Harris. Mike Harris is a Thompson Hello, Valley native and he's our ag expert. Uh, we're gonna feature some uh, places like uh, the Cove that's gonna be west of us. We're gonna go to Burke's Garden. Behind me, uh, we're standing at the lookout in Thompson Valley. Behind me, we've got uh, the Battle Knobs that are here right behind me. That's where the Indian fighting was. To the west, we've got Morris Knob. Now, there, there's a lot of history involved in Thompson Valley. Thompson Valley was settled by Mr. William Thompson, uh, they think as early as 1774. And he originally acquired a track of land at the foot of Morris Knob over here, 229 acres from the Lowell Company. That's uh, back when we had King George, uh, before we became a country. And uh, he later on acquired a large tract of land that would be six miles east of there, which would be in Thompson Valley proper here somewhere. We don't know exactly where. Mike probably knows. Mike knows the history, being a native of Thompson Valley. Uh, it's, it's a great place to be from, isn't it, Mike? Well, I, I'm kind of partial. Uh, I, I was, this is my home. I, I was born and raised here. And, uh, it, it, it's it's a unique place. I, I, uh, there's there's no other place uh, that I'd rather be yeah. right now. It's good land, good people. You get lots of rainfall. Got excellent grass. The, the climate's real temperate. Good for cattle growing. And uh, uh, you know I've always loved this place. And this is an iconic view. Everybody that comes into Tazewell County on 16, this is the first thing they see. Right. And there's there's not a better view in the world, in my opinion, than right here. Well, one other thing about uh, not just Thompson Valley, but just the area right here. Uh, 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 several years ago, they were trying to come up with a nickname for the area, and the Bluefield Bunch. I'm not sure if it's a Chamber of Commerce or who, but they had a little contest, and they they came up with Four Seasons Country, and. Uh, uh, I, I think that is just as apt. That, that's what we ought to have. We certainly have four seasons. Mike, how did you come to be in this beautiful place? Well, uh, Marcus was talking about the history. There, there's a whole lot of folks. Uh, there's a number of uh, farms in, in Thompson Valley. It's been here 200 years in, in the same family. In, uh, uh, in the Cove, there's several down there. But uh, my great-great-grandfather was a tenant farmer uh, at Governor Stewart's farm in in Russell County, and I don't even remember how long ago that was, but he brought two mules and a wife to Thompson Valley and bought a little place, uh, uh, and that that's how I got here. Uh, but there, there's a there's a whole lot of history around though. People don't realize how hard fought this battle was to try to tame this land, do they, Mike? Well, it's amazing when you get a little older, you have fond memories, you start looking back and being reflective, and you have selective memory. You remember the good times, but uh, uh, it was a tough life. Uh, it, it, it was tough to, to feed a family mm -hmm. back then. Double bit axe and a, a horse or an old oxen, and they had to they had to clear the land like that and get the rock off of it and you know, try to get some semblance of a fence if they you know they they wanted to contain their animals and uh, right. they didn't have the conveniences in their house running water and electricity and all the things that we take for granted oh. now. And I imagine mm -hmm. back in those days, if you were sitting around a little stove or up beside a hearth mm -hmm. somewhere on a day when it's four degrees and it's going to be below zero tonight. You realized how close you were to the earth then, didn't you, Mike? Well, you, you, uh, you got down to basics, and we, we do the same thing. Uh, we, we do work basically to feed ourselves and put a roof over our shoulders and uh, over our heads and, and, and keep it warm. But uh, that's one thing about American farmers. Uh, they've got so efficient that less than 2% of the people can... Uh, 
uh, pro provide all the food in, in this economy, people will, spill, will spend less than 2% of their income to feed them. It wasn't that way. No, it was pretty costly. Uh, it, it was about uh, 70 to 80 percent of your income. Yeah, we've got the lowest uh, food cost in the world right here in this country. That's don't. exactly right. If you're ever on Route 16, about seven miles south of Tazel, stop right here and take a look at this beautiful scenery. We're going to get in our truck and ride about six or seven miles west to the Cove section of uh, Tazel County. You're going to love it. United Country, Riverside Realty and Auction Incorporated, located in Tazewell, Virginia, is your premier real estate and auction company. This year, we've sold lots of properties. Give us a call, and let's turn for sale into sold. If you're in the market for a home, check out these properties. This spacious home is located in Bluefoot, Virginia, and is ready to move in. Or how about this beautiful ranch home located between Tazewell and Bluefield? Or check out this gym in Thompson Valley that features a bold stream. For more information, give us a call today. Hello again, I'm Dale Hill and I'm Sabrina Nall and we'd like to invite you to tour this beautiful home on Friendship Drive just outside of Tazewell. It's one of our newest listings in United Country. Come on in and let's take a tour. Folks, thank you for coming along with us. We made our way about 10 miles southwest of Tazewell. We're in the cove, known to some as Ward's Cove. This area was settled in 1769 by David Ward and his family. Uh, David was a frontiersman and an Indian fighter and went on uh, to uh, the Battle of Kings Mountain. He was in the militia when we formed this country. He was under the, uh, under the uh, control of uh, Mr. William Bowen and Rees Bowen. Rees Bowen was killed at the Battle of Kings Mountain. In this area, folks, there, there are families that have owned their farms for seven and eight generations. This land is highly coveted. Uh, it's easy to understand why, because it's so beautiful and it's such rich farmland. It's just a great area. I'm down here with Alan and Mike, and uh, guys, it's an awful nice place down here. Good folks down here in the Cove, and uh, I know you've got a lot of friends down here that are farmers. Mike, you got anything you'd like to say? Well, the, the, uh, a couple unique things about the Cove, uh, 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 there are few places where large tracts of land have been maintained. Lots of families, if they have seven or eight kids and they split a farm up seven or eight ways and you do that for a couple generations, the size of the farm gets goes down. But uh, there, there's four landowners down here that, that own the vast majority of this land here. There's still quite a few sheep in this area too, aren't there, Mike? Yeah, we've got one one producer who's as good a shepherd as there's, as I've ever seen. He he's he's staying in it. But the big the big advantage that we have, folks think that there's something magical uh, about our grass here, and, and and 
we have the most productive grassland of any folks around us, but it's primarily because of the distribution of rainfall during, during the year. We, we have uh, 45 inches of rain a year usually, and during the growing season, we usually get an inch a week. And the agronomists say that's perfect. Folks, this was the Cove. It's a beautiful place, and we're going to head to Birch Garden. made it to Burke's Garden and I'm here with my business partner Alan Neal. Alan uh, grew up in Burke's Garden. He and his family still farm in Burke's Garden. So Alan tell us a little bit about Burke's Garden. 
Well, Birch Garden's just a big community. It's a lot of friends and family in Birch Garden. Uh, the Meeks own most of Birch Garden, and uh, from there it just kind of got broken up and broken down to where it is now. Yeah. Got a lot of folks here that are descendants of farmers that settled in here years ago, but uh, uh, in recent years there's been a lot of farms been broken up and sold, and you have people from out of here that own property here. There's, I understand there's about 250 people that, that are residents here. That doesn't mean they're full-time residents, but they have properties here. They've got uh, small mini farms, and some have larger farms, but uh, Berks Garden's real unique. It's uh, Virginia's highest valley floor. It's about 3,000 feet. And it looks like a volcano if you look at it from the air or if you've seen some of the photos that are out there. But actually, geologists say that Berks Garden was formed when water eroded the limestone formations away underneath and it created this, this unique bowl-shaped feature. It's surrounded by national forest on the mountains behind me. And uh, the water that flows out here goes into Wolf Creek, and Wolf Creek leads into the, the New River. Um, it's got a lot of game. and. Uh, one of the biggest industries in Berks Garden uh, would be what it's always been, it's the cattle industry. That really got rolling uh, with export cattle about the turn of the century when farmers sent like 1,500 pound animals to market. And at one time before they put them on rail, they had to drive them all the way to Baltimore to sell them. But the cattle were uh, quite a bit larger than the cattle we ship out of here now. But uh, if you're over here, you, you might encounter a, a a cattle trailer at any time so uh, you know that's the biggest industry here in and out. Yes cattle is still the biggest industry in Birch Garden. Where'd it get its name from Al? Well it came from James Burke. Yeah he was in here they were doing a uh, survey is that right? That's right. In uh, 1748 James Burke and, and a survey party were here we don't know where they were here but they discarded some potato peelings and the next year those potato peelings had sprouted up and, and grown a pretty nice crop of potatoes and they were joking with uh, Mr. Burke and they called it Burke's Garden. And uh, you know, that uh, that's where it gets its name from. Yeah, you know, at one time Burke's Garden had about 1,500 residents. It had several stores and it had meals and it had a ladies institute here. And uh, now with a population of about 250, uh, you can see how that population shrunk. But you know, it's still a very nice place. It has a community center. Uh, it has a state-of-the-art television and telephone and internet service here with the Berks Garden Telephone Company and uh, um, their service is as good as you'll get anywhere. I actually live here in Little Creek and I'm very impressed with their service. Hi there, I'm Marcus Gilbert with United Country and Tazewell. Folks, I'm glad you joined us on our TV show today. It's a new year and maybe it's time for a new house. We're in Thompson Valley today and this beautiful house has almost 2,200 square feet. Three bedrooms, two baths, a tremendous family room, a drive-in garage in the basement. As you can see from the video, the surroundings are absolutely splendid. It's, it's got a river in front of it. And, uh, and yet it's still close to town. So why don't you give us a call and let's give you a personal tour of this beautiful property.
Hey friends, thank you for joining us on our television show. We really appreciate you. We try to keep the show lively and interesting, and boy, do we have something real interesting for you tonight. I'm joined by my very good friend, Freddie Waldron. I've known Freddie my whole life. I go to church with Freddie. But I just recently discovered that Freddie has uh, a God-given talent for photography. Freddie works as a product uh, designer for Coalfield Services out of Withful. But uh, when he's not working, he's out taking pictures. So let me introduce Freddie Waldron to you. Freddie, how you doing? I'm doing good, Marcus. Appreciate you joining us. This is also, uh, we're joined by Dale Hill. Dale Hill's an associate here with us, and uh, Dale does a real good job selling real estate, and we invited him in on this session just, uh, just to see his pretty face. Yeah, just glad to be here with Freddie. I don't know about glad to be here with you, but glad to be with Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> Freddie, what got you into photography? Well, I started in photography, uh, my father-in-law, uh, late father-in-law, Jack Fritz, had uh, given me a camera, a 35 millimeter Kodak Retina camera that he had uh, got when he was in the service back in Japan in 1952. So that kind of started the ball rolling. And I've been doing photography on and off uh, for the past 36 years. And uh, I'm no professional by no means. Uh, I do it as a hobby. Freddie, I don't know. We may argue that professional point. We had a chance earlier this evening, Marcus, before you came back over to look at some of Freddie's photos. And Freddie, I guess my question is, we see a lot of church, a lot of still life. What inspires you with, with the photos that you're taking? Um, I, I look at a scene and uh, I look at the light. I love chasing the light when I'm taking my photos. That's the main thing in uh, any good photo is capturing the light just right. I had an opportunity to go out with Freddie on a photo shoot recently, and, and uh, when he says he chases the light, he really means he chases the light. He, just, he looks for those shadows to be just right and for the color to be just right. And uh, Freddie's a perfectionist. He's a very humble man, uh, but his work, I'd put Freddie's work up against anybody's work. Now, he doesn't brag on himself, but uh, I, I think he's probably better doing, doing scenes, taking na nature scenes, because that's what he loves, but he does a very good job taking portraits of people. And uh, he took some portraits of my daughter and, and her fiance, and uh, and I'm telling you, it was just top-notch work. It's unbelievable, Freddie, some of the stuff that we've seen downtown that you've taken during the Christmas season with the churches, and I mean, just stuff down at the down at the museum, and just beautiful, beautiful scenes. Uh, in Southwest Virginia, here we have uh, some of the most beautiful scenery. And uh, the buildings, uh, there's a history behind the buildings. Yeah. And uh, I just uh, like to do a little bit of nighttime shots at Christmas, uh, churches at uh, Christmas time, and a few houses. If you've ever watched our show, folks, you know how much that, that we love Tazewell County here at United Country. Uh, we think that there's no prettier place on earth. And I've traveled a little bit, and Freddie's traveled, and Dale travels a lot. But we always come back to this place, it's our home, it's where our roots are, it's where our soul's at. And, um, and we just really love it and, uh, and we know that, that you love it and appreciate it too. And that's why we try to bring you this show that, that shows you Tazewell County in a different light. Uh, it, it is really a great place to be for him. You know, Marcus, I think that's true and, and shown throughout the shows that you've done. I mean, it brings the heart that we all feel in what we do here with the real estate business, but it's more than just selling houses. It's selling homes, and it's mm -hmm. bringing people to the area that we love and the area we like to talk about. And, you know, Freddie's, you know, he's got a lot of historical buildings in there, and it does. It captures the history and you know, the church, the Episcopal Church, if you don't get a warm feeling from seeing those photos that you've taken of that, you sure I do. mean, you're missing something. Now, the the photos that we're going to feature on this month's show, you just recently went on a trip. Tell us about that trip. I uh, went on a trip. Uh, my brother and I, we uh, flew out of Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, went to northwest Montana, and uh, we uh, spent two weeks there, and uh, my sole purpose going there was to take the photos. And uh, I had uh, planned on going to uh, Grand Teton and Yellowstone area, but uh, they made an announcement that by the year 2020, the glaciers would be gone in Glacier hmm. National Park. So uh, that's uh, what prompted me to go to Glacier. You spent how long there, Fred? Two weeks. Yeah. 
you went in a helicopter and you went on the ground. You did a lot of different things. Yeah, uh, when we got out there, we uh, rented a uh, helicopter to do an aerial view. We did uh, about 25 miles of hiking on different trails. Uh, had to carry the bear spray because there is grizzly and black bear, and uh, you have to really be bear aware when you're in that area. But uh, my brother, uh, he uh, wanted to go up in the helicopter, so uh, we ran the helicopter. Marcus and I had the opportunity not long ago to fly in a helicopter. It was an open cockpit helicopter. They wouldn't let us do it because it's afraid Marcus's hair is going to get caught up in the blades on us. <laughs> <laughs> we, they, we got refused. Now, Freddie, I know you work a lot and the time you drive back and forth to Withful, but if somebody wanted some scene shot, would you have time maybe uh, to do that? Because it, it would be a blessing to somebody to use you as a photographer. I could probably arrange it. Uh, uh, like I say, I, uh, my specialty is uh, landscapes, but I do do portrait shots. Here. Hey, Freddie, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us and sharing your photography you. with us. Thank you. And thank you, Dale, for coming out. Thank you, Mark. Folks, at the bottom of your screen, we're going to put Freddie's home phone number. He's got an answer machine there if he's at work, if you'd like to have some photography uh, done. I'm sure Freddie would like to talk to you. And, Stay tuned, we've got some more Freddie Waldron's photography on here. I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. And while I'm on the subject, if you know an interesting story that you'd like for us to cover, or an interesting person that you would like to be interviewed, we wanna hear about them because there's so so many people in Tazewell County that are so interesting, and uh, we'd like to bring that to light. So thank you very much for joining us on our show today, and uh, God bless you.